か Something incredible has happened. If you've caught up to the new season of Jujutsu Kaisen, you'll probably agree when I say that, in my honest and ever so humble opinion, Studio Mappa have basically created what can be compared to as a five part movie. Yes! 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 No! Fuck! Shit! It's very clear that they're taking a substantial level of feedback they've had with season one, but it also seems like they've applied some lessons they've had with Chainsaw Man, where they aim for a more cinematic experience where there's a lot more of this movie like attention to detail. But it's also great to see that they haven't done this in a way that makes it jarringly different from season one, with the exception of the first episode having a marginal amount of CGI and rotoscoping that I actually really enjoyed simply because of how fresh and different it was. Turns out it wasn't rotoscoping, the animators are just that talented. Lately, we've had a bunch of anime that try to make it very apparent that 3D backgrounds on 2D characters will eventually become mainstream for the development of future shows, and I'm honestly completely fine with that so long as it's done in a way that is beneficial for the show itself. It's probably not the case for this one, I'm gonna be honest. But besides what I just talked about, if we look past that first half of the episode, I really did enjoy the rest of these first few arcs because of how, in its entirety, it literally just felt like I was watching a long ass movie. The voice acting is very well done, the animation is absolutely stunning, the fight scenes are incredibly well made, and the best part about the story so far is that it's completely necessary to fully understand the scope of Jujutsu Kaisen as a story moving forward. Now if you haven't been paying attention, or maybe you just didn't want to binge watch last season's 24 episodes, you're probably wondering, how much has the animation actually changed, and is it for the better or for the worse? And why are people calling this season a downgrade? <laughs> If this is something you've done some research on yourself, you've probably understood that besides the visual change in the art style, there's actually two substantial factors behind the upgrade in visuals which are tied directly to the feedback that was the result of season 1 back in 2020. Compositing is the first of these concepts. Compositing in layman's terms is how animation studios will take multiple images, graphics, or effects, and use the compiling of said images and effects to create that one specific scene that's presented before you. The first season of JJK often had moments where the compositing itself was rather questionable, which resulted in numerous scenes present within season 1 that honestly felt weird to rewatch. The moments that I am referring to, at least within this video, aren't terrible by any means, because if anything it's heavily remedied by the fact that the show as a whole is still incredibly enjoyable to watch. But it kind of makes you question... What the fuck was this color palette? Smoothness itself is pretty self-explanatory in that because of how season 2 is currently being animated, there's been more dedication toward how fluid scenes or movements of characters can be, which makes a lot of moments feel much higher in quality in comparison to season 1. But besides these two factors, there are a few things I want to point out in regard to how season 1 was portrayed, and what exactly had been changed when it came to the presentation of the fight scenes themselves. In season 1 of Jujutsu Kaisen, there was this level of detail that was put into said fight scenes where certain moments of the animation ended up looking like it was kind of strange in terms of consistency, and this was mostly in part due to the overly detailed characters. And because of this design in the presentation, at least looking back on it now, it actually feels really strange to see that so much detail went into making the characters themselves that it becomes very apparent when that hyperfixation of said detail ends up affecting other portions of the show itself. The best example that I have of this is during that of episode 17, where you have Maki and Mio fighting off against each other in the beginning, with it being this really cool fight that has a lot of detail put into both the characters and even into the background to an extent. And then you have Nobara and Momo fighting off against each other, and the limitations of what's possible to put on screen here are fairly obvious. A lot of CG had to be used here because of how fast Momo is flying through the environment, and there's a successive usage of filters on top of the 3D modeling that it's practically a night and day difference in terms of the production value. And even if this was something that MAPPA had come to realize while they were making Season 1, they probably wouldn't have been able to roll back any sort of art style related issues because at that point that would have to be saved for when they get ready for selling the Blu-ray DVDs of the season. Although I don't actually know if they've made any changes on it, I'm just not going to bother looking it up at this point. Now of course, I'm not saying every fight scene was completely abysmal and designed for you to practically vomit for every 5 seconds you spend watching this show. If that were the case, we wouldn't be this hyped up over Season 2 in the first place. But you can definitely see the difference in quality between each season due to how the priorities in the animation have definitely been shaped up for a more consistent experience overall. Most of the details in Season 1 have been developed toward the characters, and in Season 2, Studio Mappa have literally flipped their focus for what matters this season, which is heavily paying off for them. They've been able to do this facelift in the environmental detail because of how the art style is more simplistic, allowing for them to diverge less effort into the characters and put more effort into what's actually happening around them, which then results in both the characters and the environment to be drastically improved upon in a way that just wouldn't have been possible in Season 1. When you take a 
look at season 1 from an objective standpoint, you can pretty much interpret that the art style of the characters being hyper detailed creates this intrinsic yet counterintuitive design where there's almost no room for the environment to actually be consistent in terms of production value. But even with me saying this, there's quite a few moments in season 1 that actually have their own exceptions when it comes to this design. The exceptions that I am referring to are the ones that end up being designed and animated with the intention of being a literal demonstration of what specific characters are capable of. Which is why you have the Gojo vs. Jogo fight looking like this, Tsukuna's domain expansion, Mahito meeting Tsukuna, and many more examples, but with every example I just mentioned, you'll be able to understand how each of these scenes has a caveat of its own. The reason why I won't be including the Zero movie into this argument is because of the fact that while it is a part of the show as a whole, at face value it's still a movie, and therefore probably had the budget of one along with the feedback that season 1 initially had on top of this, so therefore you won't see me talking about it for the rest of this video. In Jujutsu Kaisen season 2, this whole concept concept of everything being over detailed, especially in places where it shouldn't have been, practically doesn't even exist anymore because of the fact that we now have this brand new art style to take control of that. And it's resulted in every fight scene in season 2 making all of the ones in season 1 almost look like a joke in terms of quality. Okay, not completely, but it's still incredibly good. Throughout every fight scene in Season 2, it's incredibly apparent that the characters and the environment are almost behaving as though they're having this mutual exchange of who is better animated in those very moments. But now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the actual point of this video. Why do people think that this season is still a downgrade? Well, to be honest, I don't think it actually has anything to do with the art style or pretty much everything else that I mentioned throughout this video. It probably actually has to do with both the place and the time. Let me explain. It's very clear that this season takes place in the past, but the reality is that this probably isn't all that obvious until you get past the first 10 minutes, at least mostly to those that actually touch grass. Season 1 ended on, I believe, the first half of chapter 64, with Toto and Meimei giving in their recommendations to make the first years of Jujutsu high grade 1 sorcerers, with the ending moments of the season showing our iconic trio going to meet up with Gojo. With that being the end of the season, we've had to wait 3 years for season 2 to release, so so it's fair that a lot of people are going to forget what happened within season 1, which makes it kind of confusing why they decided to make the recap episodes exclusive in Japan, but we can't really do much about that so... <laughs> The only real thing we've had to quote unquote continue the story was that of the Zero movie, but the problem with it is that it's a prequel that covers the events that take place directly before season 1. Which in all honesty might be even more confusing going into season 2 as long as you're an anime only because of how we never truly understand the real origins of Geto Suguru. We only really understand that he used to go to Jujutsu High and that he wants to turn every sorcerer against humanity itself. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Being thrown into season 2 with no information prior to clicking on the episode can definitely be confusing to the average viewer to say the least. So it turns out that this is a really stupid fucking point because I completely forgot while making this video that, um, there's this thing called the, uh, oh, I don't know. The intro? But you know what? Fine. Let's say that you skipped the intro, which, let's be honest, you probably did like most people do. There's still the natural confusion that can occur from the idea that the series so far has gone like this. You watch season 1, the present, you watch the Zero movie, which goes into the past, and now you're watching season 2, which, for the first 5 episodes, is also the past. I don't think I've ever seen an anime that decides to not only go into the past for more emphasis on what's happened throughout the story, but then doubles down on itself to go into the past even further. And I'm gonna be honest, if I went into this season with no prior knowledge of how the story was going to be formatted or adapted for that matter, I probably would would have experienced whiplash just seeing the characters and art style be this. And newsflash, if this is the sole reason that you think the season is a downgrade, then this sounds like a skill issue. I'm sorry. But okay, that's just the form of presentation that's in Jujutsu Kaisen. This isn't even exclusive to the anime as the manga itself does something similar in this way of storytelling. The first volume of the manga was published in July of 2018, volume 0 was published in January of 2021, and the 8th volume would be published in February along with volume 9 to follow shortly afterward. I think shortly. Now, I know I said earlier in the video that I don't think the art style actually has anything to do with the season being considered a downgrade, at least to some people, but I'm gonna go ahead and just revoke that statement because no matter what, the art style itself is actually really important to consider into this argument when you actually take a look at how three specific manga panels have been adapted into the anime. And of course, those being the poses of Gojo and Toji about to have their last fight and the Honored One manga panel. Some manga readers, of course, weren't entirely happy about how they didn't adapt the scenes before you in a one-to-one -one manner like how they did with most of season 1. And obviously you could argue that this is because MAPPA, believe it or not, they want to take risks and maybe try something different here and there, as they've practically shown us that they want to do this within their last two seasonal releases. 
But you have to also remember that MAPPA isn't going to all of a sudden make Gojo or Toji these overly detailed figures within these specific scenes. They could probably do it if we were to be completely honest for a second, but at that point it probably would have gone against the entire point of the art style of this entire season, that being simplicity. The details of the show are going to be watered down in some areas so that every other part of the show can shine as well, as opposed to just a few specific areas. But the entire reason of this segment of the video in particular is to also realize the notion that some parts of the show, at least in the future, just simply may not have that level of detail when it's actually necessary. But I'm still perfectly fine with the scenes by the way, I just wanted to point that out. But I think that's enough rambling about why I'm basically just glazing the entirety of season 2, so uh, yeah, you know what, let's get to the end of the video. Overall, I'm grateful for what we're getting in season 2, and I hope Jujutsu Kaisen can continue to be this incredible throughout the rest of the season, as well as the next season, since we're gonna be here for the long run. But let me know down in the comments about how you felt with this season so far, and how you feel about the new style and the adaptation. Give me any criticism or comments down below, tell me what I messed up on or missed out on, and thanks for watching the video. Like, comments, a peace.